On this bonus episode of Locked on Jayhawks, Kansas has a new offensive coordinator, Jeff Grimes. Come on down. You are Locked on Jayhawks, your daily podcast on the Kansas Jayhawks, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Eric Johnson. You can hear me as well Monday through Friday from 3 to 6 p.m. on KLWN in Lawrence with Rock Chalk Sports Talk. Thanks for making Locked on Jayhawks your first listen every day. We are free and available anywhere you get your podcasts. You can also like and subscribe to us on our YouTube page. Thank you to the everydayers tuning into each and every episode. We had an episode out earlier today with Nick Schwart talking some KU basketball, KU football, whose stat line is it anyway. We'll have a KU Missouri preview on tomorrow's show, so you can catch all that anywhere you get your shows. Uh, We're going to be talking offensive coordinator news as KU has a new one at their OC position. Jeff Grimes in. Obviously, Andy Kotelnicki, the previously offensive coordinator for KU since 2021, has taken the job as the offensive coordinator at Penn State. Kansas announced Jim Zabrowski was co-offensive coordinator. And that kind of left some opening like, okay, why is he co? If Kotelnicki's leaving, was it just a procedural thing? I think we found out that they were leaving it open to go out and possibly make a hire. So Jeff Grimes comes in to replace him. Now, who is Jeff Grimes? He's uh, originally from Garland, Texas. He played as an offensive tackle at UTEP in the late 80s, early 90s. He eventually got into a uh, coaching career um, in the kind of mid-90s, starting as a GA at Rice in Texas A&M. And then he was a longtime offensive line coach, starting at uh, Hardin-Simmons in the late 90s, Boise State, Arizona State. State, BYU. He was at Colorado where he was also the associate head coach. Uh, Then he went to Auburn from 2009 to 2012. So I believe he would have won a national title with Cam Newton at Auburn. Uh, Offensive line coach at Virginia Tech in 2013 from LSU from 2014 to 2017. And then he became an offensive coordinator for the first time in 2018 with the BYU Cougars. He was there as the offensive coordinator from 2018 to 2020. And then he got the job after that 2020 season with BYU. He got the job as the offensive coordinator and tight ends coach at Baylor from 2021 to 2023. So first of all, that's very interesting. He was the offensive coordinator slash tight ends coach at Baylor because what was Andy Kotelnicki? He was the offensive coordinator and tight ends coach. You don't see a lot of offensive coordinators who are also the tight ends coach. A lot of times it ends up being the quarterback's coach or something like that. Um, but that allows, because KU is such a multiple offense, it's so important with how they use the tight ends for them to be that guy. Now, he has uh, offensive line history, but uh, Scott Fuchs has done an excellent job as the offensive line coach for KU. So I would imagine this is a perfect hire that Grimes can come in, be the tight ends coach and the offensive coordinator once again at KU we do know for sure he's the offense coordinator I guess the other part is just me kind of assuming though um now as far as his his past career and and what he's done at Baylor and everything like that first of all I like this hire I'll get into the fit here in a second but you look at his time um he in 2018 is the offense coordinator at BYU they averaged 5.5 yards per play his first year there they were 70th in the country in yards per play so that's not a great number it's not a horrible number though even about kind of middle of the pack in in the NCAA, but he had a, a kind of quarterback controversy that year. It was like a freshman, Zach Wilson, and um, you had another quarterback who was kind of uh, in, in there as well. It's kind of up and down. Year two, they grew a lot. They were 29th in the country in yards per play at BYU, 6.1 yards per play. And 2020 was the incredible season with Zach Wilson that ended up turning Zach Wilson into a top three pick in the NFL draft, where they averaged 7.7 yards per play. That was first in the entire country, even above Alabama, who was number two that year. They were also third in the country that year in points per game, over 40 points per game. So then he goes to Baylor, gets the job there. 2021, he, they're 41st in the country in yards per play at 5.9, and they win the Big 12. They go 12-2, and two, they make it to the Sugar Bowl. And all through his time at Baylor, like you're trying to play kind of complementary offense because you're with a defensive coach, so keep that in mind. But then 2022, they had a top 40 offense in points per game. And they were at 5.5 yards per play, which was 58th. This past year, though, bottomed out a bit. 86th in yards per play. That was uh, uh, 5.1 yards per play for them. They were one of the worst offenses in the Big 12. But I think what you see when you go across all those different years for what he did in his previous stops, when he had a good quarterback, Zach Wilson, or I think that first year, like Blake Shapin had a really good year in 2021. When you had a good quarterback, he was able to produce elite offenses. When he had you know struggles at quarterbacks, they were basically national from national perspective, average to below average offenses. So um, 
I, I like the hire overall. He also was a good recruiter, whether it was, you know, you, you look back 24 seven sports. I think that goes back about a decade, decade plus a little bit over that in terms of their recruiting database. Uh, according to 24 seven sports, Grime is, Grimes was the primary or secondary recruiter on 21 different four or five star commits over the course of of his time as an offensive line and an offensive coordinator over the past, you know, whatever that database goes back to. And 20 of those 21 four and five star commits he got, in addition to other, you know, high level three stars, were offensive and defensive linemen. So somebody who can come in, be a good recruiter in the trenches for you, too. I like this hire. Let's get into why I think it's a good fit and then what it means for Jim Zabrowski here in just a moment. This episode, bonus episode of Locked on Jayhawks is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. As the weather gets colder, the NFL offers stay hot on FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning money line $5 bet. It's $150 back if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. So why I think this is a good fit, then we'll get into what this means for Jim Zabrowski here with uh, Locked On Jayhawks. I think it's a good fit. I mean, A, he's had success when he's had good quarterbacks. I think there are some interesting comparisons you can make with Zach Wilson to Jalen Daniels. And obviously with Zach Wilson, his NFL career kind of sputtering out right now that makes what he did with him even more impressive. But I think there's some interesting comparisons like in terms of both are more undersized quarterbacks, right? They're not your typical 6'3", 6'4", 6'5", quarterback, right? Uh, both are really good throwing on the run. Both, despite not being that 6'3", 6'4", 6'5", 6'6", guy, have insanely strong arms and live wire arms on the outside. I think there are some interesting comparisons there. And when you look at what he did at BYU and what he did at Baylor, I think his first two years more so than what he tried to do, smash mouth power running the football with a lot of wide zone, combined with play action and downfield shots on the play action. And are those not exact staples of what Kansas has done with Amy Nicky, right? So it's not an exact replica, but Jeff Grimes likes to run motion, right? Maybe not extensively and as extremely as Andy Kotelnicki did, or maybe not as crazy of formations as Andy Kotelnicki did, did, but both like to do a lot of motions, okay? Both like to do wide zone. We heard so much when Lance Leipold first came over the wide zone from Buffalo. That's something Jeff Grimes really likes to do, and it, it did really well at BYU and did well at Baylor, too. Um, so those things are very, very similar. The, the play action, the downfield shots, off play action, like that's something Kansas has done a very good job of, and that's something that he likes to do. And so I, I think this is a good fit. And when you look at it, like Kansas has a lot of the, the good infrastructure you need around that. Like you have good offensive line coach. You have, you know, these other good assistant coaches. You have the good head coach and Lance Leipold. You have good player personnel and the good quarterback. Um, and, and I think he's coming into a system here where if you're Jeff Grimes, you're probably very uh, – because there was, there was talk that he was close to taking the BYU job going back there. I think what interests you the most if you're Jeff Grimes in this isn't just some of that personnel and, and everything. It's that Lance Leipold, when he finds a coach that he likes, like you're you're in it with him for the long haul. You know what I mean? Like you have really good job security, and, and that has to be a good thing for Kansas when you're hiring other coaches that they see, yeah, that you're gonna have this continuity with your coaches. And and I instead of going to Baylor where I get fired after year three because I'm kind of scapegoated, check out there's a good locked on Baylor episode when he got fired that they thought he was scapegoated and he kind of got the raw end of the deal. Um, that doesn't really happen in Kansas with Lance Leipold. So I, I think this is a really good fit. He does a lot of the things that you've been doing well and uh, with, with wide zone, with play action and, and everything that he wants to do. And, and because Kansas has all these other things in place, I don't think it's going to be as simple as, oh, Jeff Grimes comes in and he has full autonomy of the offense. I think it's going to, he comes in, yeah, he has some autonomy on the offense. He is the offensive coordinator, but it is kind of a teamwork deal and it kind of keeps running from where it kind of has been. So to that notion, what does this mean for Jim Zabrowski? We're going to get to that coming up in just a moment. 
This episode of Locked on Jayhawks is brought to you by Prize Picks. Basketball season's here now, so you can get in on Prize Picks there with combo picks, projections from across football and basketball. From they have their specials league, uh, which is a league created specifically for combo projections that includes two or more players from different sports or leagues. For example, you can take LeBron James plus Travis Kelsey at a ten and a half combo of three pointers made plus receptions. They have all sorts of those combos. You can specify in one league if you feel like you're an expert in college basketball college football, NBA, or you can mix and match between all of them. So prize picks is the way to test your skills this season and get an exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. That's prizepicks.com slash locked on college with code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. We're back for Locked on Jayhawks again. Check out our KU basketball identity talk. Do they have enough three-point shooting? And a little KU football with Nick Schwert earlier in the day. We'll get to our KU Missouri preview tomorrow. Thank you for tuning in for each and every episode with our everydayers out there with Locked on Jayhawks. So what does this mean for Jim Zabrowski? Jim Zabrowski, the quarterback's coach for KU, he was promoted to co-offensive coordinator for the bowl game. I am under the estimation... And that I imagine if you're Jeff Grimes, you probably, you know, get into it with the staff and, and you go along this process during the bowl game of what preparation is like here at Kansas and maybe get to know the players a little bit and stuff. Um, I, I don't know the rules with with him being hired and, and how that can all work, but um, I'd imagine for the bowl game, Jim Zabrowski will still be the one calling plays. And I think that'll be good experience for him. And then I would imagine after that, they'll work together and that Grimes will will be the play caller. I think Grimes has been more known for being a great offensive mind than maybe calling plays specifically. So maybe it does stay as co-offensive coordinator to where Zabrowski's calling the plays. I, I don't know. I, I still feel like Grimes is probably going to call the plays. Um, and I think it'll, it'll be one of those situations where like Grimes is more doing the run game coordination and Zabrowski is doing more of the pass game coordination. And then the two come together, Grimes calls the plays. And I think it'll be a seamless, easy transition for KU because of some of the similarities and because of all the infrastructure KU has in place. Now, as far as for Zabrowski, we'll see if he stays as the title as co-offensive coordinator, because that could be interesting there. Or if he does just go back to quarterbacks coach and being passing game coordinator in some way, but um, either way, I do think Zabrowski is going to still have his fingerprints on the offense, even if Jeff Grimes is the one kind of calling plays in some way. And, and I expect him to be the play caller for the uh, bowl game. All right, that'll do it for this episode of Locked on Jayhawks. You can find our show anywhere you get your podcast and on our YouTube page as well. Back tomorrow with the KU Missouri preview. Till then, later.